Hello and welcome to the Slapo channel. I'm back in Cube World for what appears to be the final time or the final instructional video. Um, I did all of the slots, I did equipment, I did items, I did ingredients, and I've done pets. So for some reason that's not showing, showing or saying pets, but that's what it is. Um, this final video is to show basically the different skills of the different classes. So we're starting with Croak and the Water Mage, who I've been using a staff the entire time. I'm not sure if I have the other weapons on him, but hopefully I do. Um, the base attack, which is a hit point, you can tell it exactly where you want, and it does like a little layer of effect. So if I shoot like a heal, there's a certain little radius. Um, then there's the second attack, which is right clicking. There's a much bigger area of effect and it lasts longer but takes up MP. Um, I have the three basic skills. As you can see there, they are all laid out in the top row for all of the classes in the skills menu, which is by pressing X. Um, the first skill for water majors is Healing Spring, which is just targeting one specific ally or yourself, you can target yourself in your healing stream. I just looking directly out the ground and heals yourself. This also uses up MP. Um, obviously the other classes don't use MP, they use stamina bar based by getting hits in on an enemy. Uh, second attack is mana shield, which just absorbs damage, acts as a higher armor value, and just lasts on you for a little while. You can run around with it and generally just absorbs damage for you while you're doing damage and healing yourself and whatever. Uh, the final move for water mages is the teleport ability. As you can see I just teleported from over there to about here. If I show you roughly the distance, this is a level 2 teleporting ability, so not even level 5 yet. I don't have any spare points to add into it, but I will just show you it. I'll teleport as close to this building as possible from this grass. And I almost reached the building from that grass. So from the top there to down here. That's roughly the length of a level 2. I believe as you skill up the teleport, it doesn't increase the length of how far you teleport, but it decreases the cooldown time. So you can teleport more often. Uh, the mana shield obviously increases the time that it lasts, or the decreases the cooldown and increases the amount that you can absorb, the amount of damage you can take. Uh, healing stream when you upgrade it increases the amount of MP it takes. Decreases the amount of MP it takes, but it still heals you the same amount as it would, which is based on your weapon. So that was the staff. Um, other weapons have the wand which you still have the same three skills, but the normal attack, left click, is just regular projectiles. And water salvo, which is like a stream that you fire, is your right click attack. It's like a series of shots, but if you fire it all in a straight line, it's effectively a salvo of attacks. So we equip that, try and find a bracelet. It's a ring. Uh, the bracelet basically does the same thing, but instead of firing uh, the salvo, it fires a series of shots, like bigger shots, that deal more damage. Um, I will now jump over to the warrior and show you that skill, those skills, skills, skills. Here I am with the warrior, obviously my most powerful class at the moment. My main character has been used in the online and all knows what else, oh, I know. Um, has legendary weapons and all this sort of armour and powerful stuff. Um, basic attacks for dual wielding, obviously just sequential hits, just one then the other, then the other, then the other. He's using an axe and a sword, but you could use various other attacks. Um, spin move is obviously the right click, so if you go to a combat, you can use that to stun and knock back. Uh, it becomes very useful if you're crowded or fighting a group of weaker enemies or a group of strong enemies, but I 
I really hope you wouldn't be in that situation. Um, skills, if you can see, I've got more to 110, so they're all really powerful. But this is my main, and he's overpowered to all hell. So, first move is the slam attack. That does a stun, and obviously has a ridiculously quick cooldown because it's 110 in skill. Uh, most skills, when you level them up, they increase, the, they decrease the cooldown. Why do I get increased and decreased mixed up? Ignore that. You know what I mean. The second move is spin move, just for a lot of quick hits against the enemies that are surrounding you. So that's obviously really useful in dungeon crawls and things such as that, attracting aggro on lots of mobs and everything. Um, then you have War Frenzy, which uh, increases your MP slash stamina bar quicker when you hit things, and means that when you charge that, it charges really quick, so you can do it like that. Obviously with the occasional hit in between, so you do like that, 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 that. And War Frenzy on, that's pretty much how quick you can charge it all. And those are the three warrior skills. Obviously, when you go to oh, that menu, that menu, when you go to a defender, you change to bulwark, which I haven't tried yet. So unfortunately, I can't tell you on that skill. But I'm assuming it's a very defense-heavy skill, as it says, immune to stuns, suffer less damage, and can can be used while you're stunned. So you can actually pull out of a stun state by using bulwark as a defender, but I'm a berserker, so I don't use that sort of thing. Next, I will show you the ranger moves, and then we will go to the rogue moves at the end, and I will show you the generic stuff. Blah, to the ranger. Okay, here we are with the third class, the ranger, my one that you have seen in the pet video for the reason that she has loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of pets. But you already know that. This part is for the skills. And so, first off, crossbow. Regular quick firing attacks. The charge shot, which does a hell of a lot more damage, especially for a level 41, and especially for higher. You've got the kick move, or roundhouse kick. Which, for some reason, makes you look like a boxer when you're finished. And makes you put away your weapon, which is a bit annoying. But uh, it's good for stunning, pushing back, and then making a great opening for using ability 2, which is the jump back. Jumps back quite a way, as you just saw. And it's good for getting out of combat, which you can then start doing your firing again, pushing back, and more kicks to get the enemies away from you. Um, the third ability is obviously the prone. Excellent for sniping, but again, you can see all the blocks that you've batted because they don't go invisible, which is a slight glitch on Wale's part, but obviously will most likely be sorted in the full game. Uh, from prone, you can still do firing, regular firing, and then using your MP obviously recharges so when you're prone, so that's good. Then obviously when you get to do, well, you can do kick still. And jump backs. Oh, that's something that I didn't know. I didn't realise you could still do spin kicks and jump backs while you were in stealth. Obviously if you jump or run around or anything it breaks the stealth. Um, with the scout, instead of jump back you get scout swiftness which just makes you faster at everything. Faster attacking, faster moving, basically pretty much all you needed. As a scout and make you run around quicker than everyone else and generally make things fun. Um, one thing I will say with one of the abilities is there's a slight glitch you can pull off with the ranger ability. That is, if you're facing said direction, you can do, I haven't tried this yet, but I've seen people try it. You can do the jump the leap back and open your parachute and it creates a ridiculous flying speed. Hang on. Let's get this to work properly without ruining everything. Let's see if I can get this working. It 
just sort of carries you along. I, I need to get this to work properly. Let's let's try it one more time. There we go. If you're applying in a straight line, it carries you ridiculously quickly and effectively counteracts any parachuting hang gliding skill that you would gain because you end up just going really fast in straight lines but then obviously once you've landed it stops again but it's a fun way to traverse open areas if you're from the highest point so if I was jumping from that building you could just if you just fly off in said direction but obviously you need to get better at learning which way you jump so doing the le leaning one way and pressing S will show you which way you're going to jump because you jump away from the cursor, obviously, as such. So now to the rogue to show you the final set of skills and talk you through the last little point, pointer part, pointer piece, puzzle, yes. Okay, and this is the rogue no particular reason as to why I've changed scenery, I just thought I should. And this class I'm playing is the Assassin, there's also the Ninja class, which obviously once again changes one skill from the set. Uh, regular attacks with the long sword, it's just hitting, obviously when you get into combat with something, which I will do combat with that pig just to show off some of these moves. Um, you obviously have the special ability, which is a push ability and stunning or poison. Stunning and poison I believe. Um, number two is slow stealth. So you slowly begin to stealth and you can creep around but the stealth bar ticks down. It also pulls up your MP as you can see. So it means if you want to build an MP bar it's fairly useful. Um, first skill obviously the charge. You can see how amazing that set is. They're just like quick attacks and then the stabbing ability that stuns and poisons. Uh, the find ability for a ninja or assassin is full stealth. It comes with this awesome and exceedingly laggy uh, effect, but doesn't last particularly long because this character is only level 7, and that is the quickest you can get all three skill abilities. So you put five into your first, five into your second, and then one into your third. Um, ninja, obviously instead of the shadow of camouflage, you get your jumping shuriken attack, which looks awesome, but for playing the long game, you'd want to play an assassin over a ninja, because ninja's a good starting off, but late game when you get to the hundreds, it becomes a bit vague. So yeah, that was the class skills and everything lags. That was the skills, this has been the last of my tutorial videos. There will most likely be more Q-World coming up, but as of yet nothing particularly planned. And I will see you next time on the Slyfor channel, goodbye.